Okay, when you install the bottom plate, the best way to do it is to get all the bolts started. Don't tighten them, leave them loose. You got one back here and one on each side. You're gonna tighten the right one first, then this one, then this one. It'll help keep it aligned perfectly. Okay, when you go to connect your phase cables to the controller, you notice that it's kind of wide here and you can't get the screw in. So the trick is to leave it up, kind of turn it, and get the screw in a couple turns, and then kind of let it at an angle. And then let the screw force it in. It'll kind of dig into the plastic on the controller, but that's okay. It holds it real tight. And then I like to come through with one of these 90 degree screwdrivers. You get a little more leverage and give it a good, a good crank down there. Should be good. Okay, we're gonna set up the uh, rear pulley. Once you get the plate mounted, you get the motor screws in the bottom. Of, there's four screws in the bottom that go up to attach the motor. Just get them you know, finger tight. And then apparently every Polaris is a little bit different because they use, these are the Polaris shims, they use different shims in the back to align their pulleys. So what I do is leave all the shims that came on the full wheeler there. And then in the kit, there's, there'll be a bag of spacers, three different thicknesses. Start out with seven of the thicker spacers. And go on like that and then your pulley this is the front and that's the back leave your bolt sticking out towards the front don't drop this if you bend these ears it'll ruin it so we'll put that on like that and then this particular you have to play with different combinations to get it all lined up but this particular bike I went with three of the uh, medium spacers and three of the real thin spacers and it turned out right. When you get it right, the spacers will stick out past the end of that shaft. That's what you want because also in the kit is a 5 16 coarse thread grade 8 bolt and a washer. When you tighten this, you want that washer to kind of dish in a little bit that's a good thing it'll keep pressure on the bolt and keep it from falling out this is critical you have to use blue loctite on these threads i like to use kind of a lot this is important this bolt does not back out now you want to get the once you get it started, you want to reach behind here with it loose and kind of line up all these shims the best you can just to keep the keep it balanced. Okay. And then to tighten this, I mean, you can use an impact, but that's dangerous. You can break that bolt off. To do it right, I put the transmission in high, and I put two zip ties on the uh, handbrake as tight as I can get them. And then I set my torque wrench on 40 foot pounds. Okay, now once you get it on there, the final check, you want it aligned as possible. I put a straight edge on the front pulley and then slide it. Want it lined up. And what you can do is, if you want to move the pulley in, you'll, you'll, you'll move your spacers in the right combination to get it lined up. Now we're going to install this belt and adjust it. 
the four bolts that hold the motor to the bottom plate, you want them finger tight and then backed out about almost a half a turn so that the motor can slide. You'll want this adjuster bolt back far enough too. And then the belt. And then you'll slide it forward. Then you'll run your adjuster bolt in. Getting there. And then uh, you're going to need a 14 straight wrench and a 13. 13 for the uh, adjuster bolt. You'll snug it up. You want it tight, almost guitar string tight. Feels about right. It almost makes a noise when you. If you get it too tight, it'll, it'll be harder on the belt. If it's too loose, the belt will slip. Then once you get it where you want it, you'll hold the adjuster bolt on this side and then tighten the lock nut so the adjuster doesn't move on you. Then you'll take your... Kind of need a long ratchet. If you got one that's kind of flexible, it helps too. Kind of hard to get to these, but you'll uh, get these tight, you know, about 30, 35 foot pounds. This usually tightens the belt up a little bit more, but we're still good there. Okay, now we'll go to the back too. These are fun. Nope, there's way more than a half a turn out. That's okay. Okay, and then you check it one last time. That looks pretty good. And then you're ready to install your belt cover. When you do, I highly recommend you put blue Loctite on these two bolts that hold it on. Okay, I'm gonna go over the connections to the bike. I'll start in the back. This orange wire, this is gonna get connected into the brake the brake light circuit on the orange Polaris wire. Then your ground is this black wire. I take the, the Polaris, this was uh, on the starter, the ground wire to the starter. I mount it up here where the coil usually goes with the same bolt and then attach the new harness to it. I'm gonna come up here, then this white wire that's your positive 12 volt feed to the bike. You're gonna attach it to the starter relay where all the other Polaris wires are that'll feed into the Polaris that way. And then, at least on the 2025 models, the chassis relay right here, you have to solder a piece of wire in between pins three and five. And then for the four-wheel drive, you'll run these two wires. You can cut the plug off your 
Polaris harness that goes as a differential. Black to brown, white to gray. Okay, when you hook up the cooling lines, you start on the right-hand side, that's your lower hose. And you'll get these in the kit, these reducers. If it's an older bike, you may clean out the inside of that pipe, maybe put a little silicone on here. Slide that up in there and then clamp it. I've reused these spring clamps, they work just fine. You'll also get some screw type clamps in the kit. Then you, know, you get your clear line that comes with it and run it out of the lower hose up into the front of the motor. And then cut another piece of hose and run from the back of the motor up through here, up through the bottom of the controller plate. You'll go into this elbow. That's the inlet of the water pump. And the outlet goes here. It'll go down into that hole there. And then it'll come down. You'll use another reducer and hook to your other radiator hose that goes to the top of the radiator. When you go to first prime it, it's a real pain in the neck. You have to uh, fill your radiator completely full and then jack the foiler up in the front as high as you can. And then it's hard to get it prime. What I usually do is I'll undo one of these lines on the pump and air will come out. It'll probably make a mess, but once you get it primed and get it started, it works all the time. Okay, the big zip ties, they go right here in these holes and wrap, wrap this plate to the frame. And then you use the air, um, air box screws that were on the Polaris for these two back holes. You'll put them in and you'll push this plate as far forward as it'll go with the screws in. And that'll keep it uh, out of the way where the seat rests. 